Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another Make Shop Pro video. Today we are going to cover a double exposure technique. Now there's a number of different ways that you can achieve double exposure. The method that I'm going to show is the one that I feel like provides the most amount of flexibility when you're working with the different images that you're trying to blend. You can use blend layers and erasing and do all kinds of crazy business, but the method that I'm going to use is crazy in its own right because it's going to be a nested masking approach. So if you're new to masking or you're unfamiliar with it, I have a few other videos that you can go check out to get a better understanding because uh, otherwise you're going to have to hold on to your hats because we're going to get really deep into it. So let's get to it. So to start off, we have an image of a nice businessy looking man. I kind of presume that someone like him would be very much interested in money. So we're going to be blending him with an image of money to create our double exposure. So for the first part, I'm just going to speed through this. This is just me trying to isolate the gentleman from the background so that we can have that nice shape of just the portrait. And I'm using a combination of the background eraser and standard eraser with varying levels of settings. I have other videos on erasing that you can check out if you're interested in understanding how I'm manipulating all these different values as I go. But let's just jump next to where we're going to start manipulating the layers. So now that we have our main figure isolated from the background, what I'm going to do is create a selection based on opacity of the background. And what we'll see is it's not quite perfect, so I'm using the magic wand. So I'm going to do some shift adding for some of these blobs that didn't quite make it just so I can have a nice homogeneous and continuous selection that is everything but uh, the man. So now that I have that selection, what I can do is actually create a mask from that by clicking on the mask layer button down at the bottom right and choosing hide selection. What this does now is it essentially cuts out all of the background and separates the figure from the white. Now we kind of had that already, you might say, because of the erasure and the opacity, but what's nice about this mask now is that we can put any image, which is gonna be our next image, within that mask, and it'll be restricted to the space that is the shape of the man. So here's our money image. We're gonna drop it underneath that mask, and you'll see that that image is limited to the white region of the mask that was created by the shape of the man. So now if we hide the top image, you'll see how the money shows through. Now for the sake of getting the orientation right and having it fit a little bit better in the whole space of the man, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and expand the image. And all of this is done with the pick tool. So that's our first mask. Now with the two layers of the man with no background and the mask of the money coming through, if we reduce the opacity of the man, you can see that we already have sort of this nice potential for a double exposure. But for it to look nice, we gotta do more to it. So I'm going to duplicate the money and then bring it to the front. What we wanna do is now make our second mask. And what this mask is gonna be focused on is sort of cutting out the shape of the bottom of the man. Part of the reason for doing this is because if you look at a lot of the double exposure images that are out there, a lot of times the, the way that you get the real convincing blend between the two is one of the images is used to um, control the shape of one area of the image, and then the second image is geometry is used to control the shape of another part of the image. So in the same way, we're going to have the man's head or the top part of his bust um, control the shape of the top of the image, but now we're going to create a mask so that the money, or at least some parts of the money, act as defining the shape of the bottom of the image. So to do this, once again, I'm going to create another selection, but this time I'm going to use the freehand tool 
and I'm going to use the point to point since all the lines that I'm going to be drawing to create the selection are going to be straight. It makes it a lot easier if you can just click all the different places where you want the corners and the edges to be to draw those nice perfect straight lines. So once we have our selection, this time now since I selected the area I care about, I want to do mask show selection. And then if you look at the mask, what you'll see is what basically got blacked or um, removed is all the portions underneath those sets of bills at the bottom. But now if we want that to impact our initial set of images along with their masks, we actually have to move all of those elements into the area that is, that is going to be masked from our newest mask. So the simplest way that I like to do that is to first create a new group so that all the mask and image of the man are together. I'm going to call that the inner mask and then drag that underneath or nest it within the new mask we just created. So now with deleting some of the extra images, what we see is exactly what we were going for. The money defines the shape of the bust at the bottom and the man's head defines the shape at the top. And all we've done is take one mask and nest it inside of another. We can delete some of the extra images. So now that we have the overall shape that we're going for, let's apply some color and contrast adjustments to each of those layers so that they can blend in with each other a little bit more. So to start off for the picture of the man. I think what I'd like to do is kind of mute it a little bit. So I'm going to go to hue and saturation and colorize. And since we're talking about money is what we're blending it with, um, give it sort of like a greenish hue, but really bring the saturation down. So it's a really muted green, kind of like dollar bills. Next for the money layer, um, want to play with the contrast a little bit. So going to move some sliders around within levels, maybe to just give a little bit more punch to the detail in the dollar bills. So now that we've adjusted the two different images from a color and contrast point of view to the way we want it, now we need to add our third and final mask. And what we're going to do here is create what I call a blend mask. So Really what this is going to be is just creating a mask around the image of the man and doing a show all. And essentially what we're going to do is just start painting the areas that we want to show the, the dollar bill layers to come through. And the mask allows us to do that by just painting black and white. Black is like erasing, white is like unerasing. Now if at this stage you're kind of fed up with the whole mask thing or your head has exploded, um, this is the one place where you could, if you really wanted to, just take an eraser to the layer of the man and not deal with a mask at all. Just keep in mind that when erasing, you may hit a point um, where you'll lose some control um, because if you can no longer unerase, for example, by right-clicking with the eraser, um, it could put you in a frustrating position where if things aren't going quite the way you wanted to, it's going to be harder to fix. However, with masking, you can always correct it just by switching to the opposite color of whatever one you were originally using. I have more on this in my video about non-destructive image editing. But at this stage, it's really just a matter of using the paintbrush on this blending mask layer and just painting black and white in the areas um, you want to show the dollar bills more or less. and Really what I was going for was kind of following in line with the whole idea of the dollars being the emphasis at the bottom and the man's head being the emphasis at the top that I showed a lot more dollar bill at the bottom and a lot less or more of the man's face at the top. So I'm gonna speed this up also just to get through all the little nitty gritty of just kind of experimenting and changing brush sizes and softness and op opacity. Um, just experimenting to see what I kind of liked with how this turned out. And once we get to the end of that, 
um, that's pretty much the end of the magic, right? At, at this stage, this is really just the artistic part. This is where you have to kind of, you know, figure out what feels right, what is, you know, heading in the direction that you like and what's not, you know, what's what's kind of moving the wrong way. And um, what's nice about masks, like I said, is that it just gives you the most flexibility without having to, like, throw anything away, you know, if you if you end up going in a direction that you don't like. But essentially, this is the technique. By the end of this stage right here, you pretty much should have roughly the um, blending of two images in an artistic way to create this sort of double exposure effect. Now, to finish it off, um, because we use selections to create the mask, um, it had some little harshness and some overlap that wasn't just right at some of the edges. So. Um, the way that I'm going to kind of polish that off is at this stage, I'm okay with not really doing any more edits. So I'm going to do a copy merge and paste it as a new layer. And then from here, just using a soft white brush since the background is white to kind of clean that up. Then apply as a whole image a little bit more contrast fine tuning with levels and we're done. So in summary, once again, this was all about um, isolating the portrait and, and just using a whole lot of masks, um, three to be specific. And if we were to kind of review and kind of break everything out and, and walk through it again, our first mask was the one that was based off of the shape of the man to allow the money to come through. The next is the mask we put on the man itself to act as sort of the blend layer. And this is the one we just used our paintbrush to identify which parts we wanted to have show through and which ones not. And then both of those lived inside or were nested in the top mask, which defined the shape of the bottom part of the image, which the, that mask was defined by the selection created off of the money. So simply two masks nested inside of one mask to create the overall cutout that you see. So that's it. I hope uh, that with all the masking and nesting that went on that you didn't get too overwhelmed, um, but it's a great um, application to try to get a better understanding of masking in general. Um, it's definitely a great practice if you're used to masking and you want to try to do something a little bit more advanced. But anyway, uh, I hope you learned something from it. And um, as always, uh, if you have any questions or you want to suggest any new content, feel free to leave a comment. If you like the content and you want to get notified of updates, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And eventually a blog post will be created that kind of walks through all the steps that I went through so you can go through it at your own pace. That's it for me and I will see you guys next time.